Welcome to What's Going On, the weekly podcast and videocast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of What's Going On. I'm Pastor Katie, and I'm glad you joined us as we learn a little bit more about what's going on in the life of First United Methodist Church here in Yankton, South Dakota, as well as talk about our sermon series. And so you might have noticed if you're watching our uh podcast via our YouTube videos that I am in a different location today or you might hear it uh, in the sound and so tech I am coming at you from our sanctuary I'm actually in the back of the sanctuary sitting in our tech booth um, because we have some exciting things that are happening here and I wanted to be able to share those with you uh, so right now uh, in the view you can see a lot of the tech that we have that makes worship happen and as we've been living into having live stream we realize that we have um, some area of growth in, in how we can do that and how we can uh, make worship be engaging uh, for those who are watching at home. And so we've been busy um, trying to do some new things and, and add some things. And, and so I just thought I'd show you. It's one of those things that if you've never, if you, you don't think about it unless it's not working or um, you know, you just sort of can take things for granted. But the people who do this kind of work um, are real heroes because uh, when it doesn't work, it's really frustrating and, and you notice it. But when it does, it's just a seamless part of part of our worship experience. And so we have uh, in the background, you can see uh, woo, one of our cameras over here. This camera is our primary camera. Um, up until this week was our only camera. And so if you see me during Sunday worship service, you are seeing me because of that camera. Uh, we have purchased a second camera that will be, um, so that'll be kind of fun and we'll be able to, to kind of do some different shots with that. But we're working on that. That one is currently up front trying to find its home. Uh, so we haven't done that yet, but that's on the list of things to do. Um, kind of closer, you'll see the lights over here. That is our soundboard. Um, and so that's controlling all of the sound that's coming in from the front, from whenever we have praise team or singers, the organ, my preaching, uh, last week, uh, my singing a little bit. Um, and so I, that's not something I touch. That is not, uh, those who run the soundboard, uh, you have to have a real special skill set for that and to be able to really hear when things are working or not and, and understand acoustics and things like that. And so uh, that's a really uh, cool job if that's something that you're interested in. It's definitely something you can be trained on. Uh, something I have not been trained on though. And then uh, right in front of me, we have some computer screens here. Um, I'll turn this a little bit and you can see uh, I'm working, we're using a new program uh, called Pro Presenter, so we're starting to uh, get things inputted there. And then we've got, I'm going to move it again here, uh, some screens that have showing where the cameras are and things like that. And so if you ever wonder what people are doing back here, not only are they controlling the screen at the front of the church for those who are in person, but they are controlling what is getting put out uh, via our live stream. And so it's the people who are back here uh, that make live stream possible, that make it possible for you to join us uh, at, in worship from home. And so I'm really excited about um, what what is to come. It might mean we might have a few hiccups again. I know each week we seem to have a different sort of hiccup that happens, and I'm I'm so grateful for your gracious <laughs> way of handling that and to just kind of go with the flow. And we're going to do our best to continue to communicate how to best find our live streams. Um, you know, we do have our YouTube page, which is probably going to be. Um, the most reliable. If we don't get it streamed there, we will get it uploaded there uh, one way or the other. And so that's kind of, for me, one of the exciting things. I've been spending most of my day up here uh, working on learning how this all goes because uh, when I preach the, the sermons, I usually have sermon slides and I create those. And so I, I like to be able to understand how each part of the service works together because that's part of what I do. Our, our worship services, I don't just come in with the scripture and sermon. I'm actually thinking about the whole service and how it flows together and how it works together. And so I think it's important as the pastor to be able to understand how these programs work so that when I ask someone to help me with them, I know what I can ask them to do. I know what it's capable of doing. Uh, so I think that's really kind of a, an important piece uh, and a neat thing that's happening. So uh, we have 
uh, some committee meetings coming up this week. We have the youth group is going to be meeting outside on Wednesday night. Uh, so hopefully the weather holds for them and they have, have a good time there. Uh, this month is October. If you haven't figured that out already, it's October. Uh, and that is our month uh, where we're looking at gathering our pledging for 2021, which doesn't seem possible that we're thinking about 2021, but I think probably for many of us, we're sort of ready for 2020 to be done. Uh, and so I invite you, if you haven't already, to sit down uh, with your family and to discuss what it's going, your pledging will look like for the future. Uh, for 2021 in the life of the church. We, we're going to be sending out, I believe, if not this week, then next week, I think soon. I'm just going to say soon, uh, the, the pledge cards. You will get them in the mail if you are a member of our church. Otherwise, you can go on our website and uh, under the Give Stewardship uh, tab, there is an online form you can fill out and fill out your pledges that way too. If you're anything like me, um, you get something in the mail and you're like, yep, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that. And then it gets put on the counter and then your kids come home and they put their stuff on the counter and you know, all of a sudden the thing that you were gonna do, you haven't seen in two weeks. And so that's why we wanted to get that online version up and ready for you. And so that is available. So if you are ready, if, you, if you've had that discussion with your family and, and you guys have talked through what, what God is calling you to do and how to support the ministry that God is doing through our church, um, you can go ahead and, and fill that out online. We are ready for that and we'd be happy to take that. Again, part of the pledging process is that commitment that you are making to God, saying, God, this is how you're asking me to be faithful. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna live up to that and I'm gonna make that known. Uh, but it's also helpful to the church as we look uh, finances meeting later this week and we are gonna start looking at the budget for 2021. Uh, and having pledges in will, uh, by the end of this month, it's gonna help them do their work. We wanna be faithful stewards of what you give us and, and that you can trust that the money that, that comes in here is gonna be used in a, in a way that glorifies God. Um, that's our commitment to you. And so uh, pledging helps us to do that properly. And so again, just putting that out there, this is the month for it. And because we're talking about uh, money management within our sermon series this week, we talked about earn all you can. And it's been interesting in the feedback that I've been getting is that um, for all of the money sermons that people have heard, they've never heard one that in, in talking about you know, what are the considerations that we should have in how we earn our money and um, about, you know, the careers that we choose and, and things like that. And I think that's an important piece that it's not just about, I've got all this money, but you know, um, how did you get it? Is that a way that God wanted you to live your life? I hear when I was in youth ministry and especially when I would talk with seniors who were about to graduate from high school as they were heading to college and, you know, the number one question they get asked is, you know, what are you going to major in? And as, as I worked in youth ministry and visited with a lot of these seniors, one of the major considerations a lot of them had were looking at careers that would make a lot of money. Um, they believed that money was going to be the thing that would make them happy. If they had a lot of money, they could buy the houses that they wanted, that they would be able to provide for their families, that they would, um, you know, be able to travel or to have the toys that they want to have. Um, and so they were picking careers not based on what um, the giftings that they had necessarily or the calling or the passion that they had, but, but what careers could provide the most uh, money. And I think that's kind of a dangerous game to play. I think instead we really need to pay attention to what is God calling us to? Um, the size of your paycheck isn't going to matter if you are unhappy. You know, you can have, you can have a smaller paycheck and, and be completely happy because uh, even though it might be hard to make ends meet, you're still doing something that, that makes you alive and that uh, your heart is in it. And I think that's that's something that I think is really important. I mean, I, I had those same sort of conversations with my own parents when I was uh, in, you know, headed to college because I majored in theology and philosophy and minored in English. Uh, those are not exactly lucrative career options, but for me, it was never about the money. It was about... Um, I want to do something that's going to make me happy. I want to do something that I love. I want to spend my life in a field that that uh, I'm interested in and and I'll find a way to make it work. And so um, that was really important to me. Um, and so that's a big piece of this, I think, is, is it not just what you do with the, the money once you have it, but also how are you how are you getting your money? And I think another piece of it is um, to be 
to be living out your calling and and to be doing your part to be earning your way to be um to be useful right and i think it's such a difficult thing to talk about right now because there's a lot of people that that had jobs that that was fulfilling that and because of our situation right now they're not able to do that and it's such a a difficult and a and a burden for them to not be able to do what they had been called to do because of uh, where we are right now uh, in the world and uh, with the pandemic and so that's not at all what I'm talking about but I'm talking about you know if if you have a calling and then you don't you don't do it because it's hard or you don't do it because it's easier to not try so hard um, you know there are times where even if your job is your calling, it's a hard job. And, and I, I can speak from experience. I 100% believe that being a pastor is the calling that I have, the calling that God has placed on my life. Uh, I tried to run away from it, I definitely couldn't. Um, and there are days that I love it. There are days where I am so incredibly blessed uh, to have this job, but there are also days where it is incredibly difficult. And I wonder if it's worth it. I wonder, you know, is this is this really what I should be doing with my life when it's so difficult? Um, but I don't think God releases me from the calling just because it's hard. Uh, and, and I don't think God does that for other people as well. I think um, whatever it is that you're called to do, you are called to do it. Um, and I think that also goes within the life of the church. Um, you know, we're in, in the season right now of nominations within our church, which means that we're looking for the leadership of our church to help um, with the different jobs and roles that we have. And one of the things I often hear is people kind of talk about, well, you know, I did my time. I, I did my service. It's, it's time for someone else to step up. And I think there are times where that is true in some ways, but I think also um, you know, if you have breath, you have purpose and you have something you can contribute to the church. Every person that is here it needs to be here and every person that is here has, has a calling not just in their life but also um, in their role in the church. And so that's another thing I'd like you to consider as we talk about, you know, kind of pledging not only your finances but also pledging, God, what it is, what is it that you want me to do here within the church? How do you want me to help serve this community of faith so that we can live our mission to make disciples. Um, and I know right now that, you know, things are stressful and and we have this desire to kind of want to clear our plates and, and to take things off and say, I just can't do all the things that I've been doing. And I 100% hear that. But if we all choose to take church off our plate, if we all choose to say someone else can do this job, um, it's not honoring to the call that God has for you when God is asking you to do that job. And so I do want you to be prayerful about that. Um, what is God asking you to do? What do you see in the life of the church that, that could be done? Um, because God maybe has revealed that to you for a reason. And so I am always looking for people who are, who are willing to help, who have a vision for something we could be doing um, and, and to make that happen. And so I think that all goes in again to the earn all you can, which is living out God's calling in your life and and whatever whatever salary that comes with, um, you know that that is honoring to God. In Scripture, it's not about you know who makes the most money. It's about you know whatever that they whatever they have, um, what they do with it. You know God gives people different amounts of talents, right? Uh, but if you're faithful in a little, you could, God is going to trust you with more. So, you know, whatever job you have, do it faithfully and do it um, as though God has called you uh, to do that. And then to be faithful with what you receive and what you have earned with that. Uh, and we're going to talk about that start next week. Next week, is we're going to move into save all you can and what that means and what that looks like. Because it's not just about earning the money. It's about, okay, what are we going to do with it now? Um, and we, you know, there's always the temptation to be able to spend it. It's my money. I'm going to do with it what I want. But um, Wesley had some really good wisdom around saving money as well. And so I think that's going to be an important piece of this uh, discussion that we're having around money management, which again is a broader uh, discussion. And it's something again that discipleship should be uh, our whole life. It should be not just what we do uh, Sunday mornings. It's not just, um, you know, that we're attending a Bible study, but that every aspect of your life 
uh, should be guided by God. Every aspect of your life should be motivated by, okay, how can I be faithful in what I'm doing here? How can I be faithful in how I'm managing my money? How can I be faithful in how I'm raising my children? How can I be faithful in how I'm choosing to vote? How can I be faithful in the activities and, and the way that I manage my time? All of these things um, are part of discipleship and all of them uh, equal to a life of faith. And so I'm happy to continue that conversation with you. Uh, I hope that you continue to share with me your God moments and how God is speaking to you. And if things like this, like the tech uh, board and is interesting to you, we're always looking for more volunteers to be trained on how to do these things. Um, I certainly can't spend uh, a day every week sitting back here as, as I've got other things that I would like to be able to attend to as well in the church. So I'd love to have someone who uh, would love to come and do this. It's kind of fun and uh, you definitely get to be creative and you definitely get to um, provide an important role within the life of the church. So that is this week's episode of What's Going On. I hope to see you this week. We are going back into the sanctuary. We will still have our live stream services, but um, we will be open again for in-person worship. And so I would invite you to join us Sunday at 8.30 or 11. God bless. Thank you for joining us on this episode of What's Going On. We'd love to have you join us for worship on Sundays at 8.30 or 11 either in person in our sanctuary with our safety protocols in place or online on our website at www.firstumcyankton.org.